get started. There she is. <laughs> Before we call the roll, would you just maybe go through the procedure here about um, how we're going to try to move this meeting as smoothly and efficiently as possible um, and the best way to um, ask questions and so on and so forth. Yeah, I can do that. I would say so, first, I mean, speaking, so mute, your, mute your microphone if you're not speaking, if everybody can figure out how to do that. Go yeah, ahead, so if you're not speaking, go ahead and mute the microphone. Um, we've asked staff to only video in if they are if a, a question's been directed to them, minus Zach and myself. And I think um, if Shannon has the ability to video in, then um, she can video in as well. Otherwise, we're just kind of, you know, trying to make sure that the bandwidth is stable and we're not too many people crowding it. As far as the agenda, we'll go through the agenda like a typical council meeting. If you have any questions on a specific item, just raise your hand so the mayor can um, see that you have a question and then she'll go ahead and call on you each individually. Um, outside of that, like I said, it'll be just a standard meeting process unless you guys have any other suggestions on how we should do it. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, then we will proceed. I've asked um, Councilman Robertson to start us off with a invocation. Councilman? Yes, if you'd bow with me. Almighty God, in this difficult time, we seek you and your grace. We know that all things are in your hands and your purposes for this time and this people will be fulfilled. As with the Israelites on the night of Passover, we are told to stay in, isolated and free from all the idols of this world. May we focus this holy week on you and your word. Forgive us our sins as we forgive each other. We ask your blessing, O oh Lord, to be with each one. Those who are fighting for health with the COVID-19 and with each one who is struggling with job loss and financial uncertainty. We ask for your peace and your assurance to bless them. May each of us be our brother's keeper by helping others as the hands of Jesus in this time of need. We pray that you'll bless this meeting tonight, that what we may, that we may use wisdom to help and to protect each one for the sake of your coming kingdom. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we will, I will lead us if you have a flag in the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman, you think you have a flag handy? Oh, there we go, City 7. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. America. to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, and justice for all. Thank you. That was a little... Wonky. Um, first on our agenda this evening is citizens' request to address the council. Um, Wednesday, third, did we receive any citizens' requests? Uh, we haven't received any citizens' requests. And we'll okay, there are no citizen requests. Excuse me. Sorry, we'll need to do the roll call as well. No, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped it. Madam City Clerk, please, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? I'm here, but we're not online, Becky. We can see you. We can hear you. No one we can hear you. Us. Oh, well. We can see online. you as well. Oh, you mean like on YouTube? Right. Okay, Steve's on the line, so he'll look into that. Roberson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Weir? Here. Okay. Um, 
This takes us to the consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Mayor Weir, I move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Mike. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any items any council member wishes pulled for separate consideration? Madam Mayor. Yes. Item number eight. Madam Mayor, I would like two, three, four, seven, and she's already pulled eight, that's fine. I'm sorry. Hop. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilman two, Hoff, you four, said two, three, four. Two, four, two, three, four, six, and seven. Okay, um, are there, they, that's not everything. So are there any others? Okay, um, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda minus item number eight and items two, three, four, six, and seven. Council members Hoff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Lucy, Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dan Kim? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Consent agenda passes. The, uh, we'll start first, Council Member DeLucy with item number eight. Item eight, Madam Mayor, is the council is requested to issue a contract to National Streetscape in the amount of $151,424. Uh, in, in the time that we are facing now where we're looking at being pretty conservative with our spending, I wonder if the city manager could explain if this is a necessary item for us to spend our funds on. Yeah, certainly. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, the item that's before you here uh, in the form of item number eight is a grant that was awarded to the city several years ago. Uh, this is a federal transportation administration grant. Uh, the grant was to be used to construct bus stops for our Indy bus transit service. Uh, when this item came to the council several years ago, uh, we had it in the form of just doing some pretty rudimentary concrete pads at uh, these transit stops. Uh, council gave us a policy decision to go back and rework that grant so that instead of doing a smattering of uh, these concrete pads across the city, that we would instead invest in some stops that were a little more uh, user-friendly. Um, so having uh, shelters, um, having uh, actual bus benches, uh, in addition to just the concrete pads. Um, so it's taken several years uh, working through the federal bureaucracy to get this item here, but um, finally it's before the council. As I mentioned, it is a federal grant. Um, there's a certain number of days to spend these grant dollars once the final contract has been um, agreed to. So after tonight, if we were to approve this, it would be 120 days to get it constructed. Um, but these dollars are restricted in what they can be spent for. They can only be spent for this purpose. Um, as evidenced by the lengthy amount of time that we had to take to get this item modified um, for the council. So, Mr. City Manager, are you saying this is all federal money and no city money? It is, uh, and I, I have confirmed this with our, our public works director who can correct, he's on the, the call and can correct me if I'm wrong. This is $150,000 of federal grant money and $1,000 of city funds. And uh, Tim, Grandma, I know is here. Tim, if I've got anything wrong there, please jump in and correct me. No audio. No audio. Yeah. Tim, sorry, we can't hear you. Okay. Tim, while you're getting... Wants to talk? 
Yeah, Kurt, do you, Council Member Doherty, do you have a question or a comment? Yes. This was a grant that I had the city apply for over three years ago. Council Member DeLucy and I postponed this grant two years ago as we sent the city back to see if they could do more than just concrete slabs. If we don't use this money, it'll be lost. This will be the first improvements that have ever been done to any of our public bus stops. And I think it's important for people who ride the bus to go ahead and put this in and finish it up. Okay, thank you. Councilman Robertson. Yes, uh, this is federal grant money as, as uh, our city manager said. If we don't use it, we will lose it. And all but $1,000 or so of it is uh, federal money. So it's taken three years to get this grant. Uh, I think we owe it to our bus riders and the bus service to, to use this money wisely and go ahead and improve some of those pads. We wanted that in the beginning. We wanted some of those shelters uh, for people to be able to stand out of the rain or out of the snow. And so, yes, I think we need to go ahead and pass this. Councilman Deleuze, or Doherty, excuse me. One last thing, the original grant was 181,000. Money has been expended against this for planning. If we don't use it, the city will have to pay the money back for the plans. Madam Mayor. Yes, I move, Councilman approve, I move approval of item number eight. Second. I moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Tim, you might, if you can use the chat feature up in the upper right hand corner, if you have anything you want to add. Or you can just shake your head no. <laughs> okay, um the local match, Tim says the local match, can you all see this? The local match is 37,000 of CDBG funds. Thank you. There, okay, there's a motion, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Mayor Weir? Yes. Okay. Next, um, Councilman Huff. We'll start with item number two. I'll just kind of cover them all here. It's uh, something I'd like to ask, kind of like on eight there, same general question. But uh, tonight I'm looking at this agenda sitting here and he's just you know, declared a state of emergency. But uh, my only concern tonight is the general welfare, safety and the health of our residents. But yet I see these proposals to spend money Later on, they're asking for money. Um, I just like for the city manager to tell me which one of these or these uh, of these proposals which are absolutely necessary for our city state of emergency tonight. I uh, yeah, I just uh, I just like to know on each one of these if it if it's uh, you know what it has to do with the city if it's something that has to be done. Because I think it should be proposed, postponed, just like eight, but that, that's clarified now because that was one of mine also. But I, uh, reading through here, I didn't see anything myself personally that could not wait until a later time. But um, let's see, has something here that I'm not seeing, except for number six. The only thing that bothered me about number six was a change order. We're dealing with this. Uh, 
uh, bus service here. And I, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to understand how in the heck if you have a contract with Kansas City Area Transportation Authority that you would have a change order for $43,000. He could explain that and these other ones if they're something we have to do right now. I mean, we've got a lot of citizens out here. We're out here spending money and we're going to be asking for money later. We, you know, I'm just trying to filter through this, but if you'd like to start with number two and work his way down, that'll uh, kind of shed some light on here for me. Mr. City Manager. The department directors and I had our weekly leadership team meeting this past Thursday, and my directive to them was to prioritize three items for the agenda. Uh, one would be items that have uh, just routine business such as easements, acquisition authorities, et cetera. So you'll see a few of those on here this evening. The second one would be items that are grant funded or budget neutral. Um, so maybe they're a project, but as with the transit stop item we just approved, they have uh, no cost uh, to the city's uh, or, or little cost to the city's budget or dollars that can't be expended for another purpose. Uh, the last one would be items that are of a life safety um, public emergency type nature. So starting with number two and its corresponding partner number five, Substation K um, is uh, a capital project at Power and Life that's been um, uh, prioritized the last several years, funds set aside for it. Uh, this substation is located behind uh, the Coles Shopping Center on 39th Street. One of the primary tenants that's serviced by that is Centerpoint Medical Center. Um, in a public health emergency, it would be my argument uh, that sustaining power supply to a hospital, especially a regional hospital like Centerpoint would be a priority. Uh, we don't know how long this public health emergency will last, if there will be two or three spikes of this down the road or, or some future uh, disaster that would necessitate medical care. We also have some of our primary uh, economic engines in the city, such as the Independent Center, uh, also serviced by this. Uh, clearly, any kind of economic recovery is going to be dependent on those facilities reopening and doing well. Uh, and so we believe that substation K would fit right in uh, with that line of thinking. Uh, the DKMT consulting, um, we've heard uh, from that, QAD. That, that one, uh, Mr. City Manager, yeah. oh. ways of looping sub K with sub R, sub I, there's all kinds of loops to do that. That's been built into the system for years. It, in fact, if you lost sub K period, we have ways of looping that through the city to feed the center and the hospital and all that. So, but go ahead with the next one. Sure, so and I was wrong on the explanation. Before you move staff. on, Mr. City Manager, I'm sorry. Before you move on from um, the, um, I have number two and we'll just call it, um, it's corresponding item number, whatever it is. Um, six. Six, Four. what would be the risk of delaying this? Uh, similar to your cardiologist telling you uh, you have a heart condition and you need to change your dietary restrictions. Um, you don't know when that heart attack may come, but the doctors told you it's important to change your dietary uh, lifestyle so that you don't risk having a fatal heart attack. Uh, the risk here would be the substation goes down, uh, we defer this project, and then we're in a scramble mode to try to restore power, whether by looping or some other emergency repair that would be more costly. Okay, thank you. Councilman Hoff, do you want to continue? Yeah, uh, I move to approve item number two, or uh, two, yes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve item number two. I'm sorry, clerk, will you please call the roll? Council members Huff? No. Perkins? Yes. Jordy? Yes. The Lucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Ben Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. I have number two passes. Councilman Huff, I'm item number three. Same situation. We have to do that now. 
Uh, it's our belief that as we spoke for the last year or so about this concept, bringing in a consultant uh, for Power & Light will help us understand our operations, our management, and our financial position. Um, my understanding from the council and their public utility advisory board is that we want to continue to refine the operating practices at Power & Light. Um, I'm very pleased with the work that Jim Nail has done as our acting assistant director. Uh, but the expertise put forward by DKMT, I believe, will help us continue to advance uh, the council and their public utility advisory board's agenda. We did limit this to just a phase one um, of $49,000 so that we can make sure that this is a, um, a good fit, uh, that their expertise is what we believe it to be, but this gives us a stopgap in case for some reason that would be found to not be a good relationship or a good value for the city. How long is the 4984? Um, it's more based on the, the scope of services, the deliverable, but I would um, submit to the council that I don't see that lasting any more than about three to four months. So that amount of money will be good for three or four months or you ought to add to that, you said phase one. Yeah, if we decided we wanted to do additional work with this, we would need to come back to the council for additional appropriations. I move to approve item number three. Second. Second. M moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. In camp? Yes. Mayor Weir. Yes. Item number three passes. Councilman Hoff, item number four. Same thing with item four, but it correlates with item number two, which is the steel structure for that. So I move to approve that. Second. Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Councilmember Hoff? No. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item number four passes. Uh, this takes us to item number six, Councilman Huff. Same thing, and I, uh, my main concern is the change order. I, I don't understand how we can have a contract and have a change order of 43,000. I realize it's 10%, I understand that, but I, I'm just trying to clarify why we'd have a change order with the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority. This is our operating agreement uh, with the ATA uh, through the end of the fiscal year. Uh, we need to mo um, modify that agreement because um, the budget that we um, amended a few months ago uh, in light of our um, agreement with the uh, retirees on health insurance necessitated a reduction in uh, hours of operation and routes for the ATA. Uh, they've been a little uh, slow moving in getting us that agreement. So We've been operating under that, but this is the actual contract that reflects that agreement. Uh, as part of that, they do, based on ridership, volume numbers, et cetera, they do have the ability to come in and uh, uh, increase the amount of that contractual service. Um, that's part of the deliverables in the contract, as I mentioned. So that would be the associated up to 10% change orders. Okay. It seems like yeah. we would be, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Councilman Robertson had a question or a comment. Um, just a quick question about the hours. I know we restricted the hours some um, a couple months ago. Is this extending those hours back to where they were, or are we still working with the, I believe it's the evening hours? Yeah, no, this, this is not extending any of the hours. This is simply uh, putting into contract the cuts that were uh, made to balance the budget. Okay. I think we need to make every effort possible to allow people to get to work that are using the bus service, either in Independence or from Independence to Kansas 
City. So um, I would be in favor of this. Council I, was just, I was just questioning the change order end of it. I understand the bus riding thing. I'm not trying to cut somebody out of a bus ride. I'm just asking the change order part of it. So um, I move to approve item number seven. Second. Oh, that was item number six. I'm sorry, just for clarity. Oh, sorry. sorry. Six. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for approval of item number six. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Albertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item number six passes. Um, Councilman Huff, item number seven. Same question, yes. right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just want to know if this is something we have to do at this point or if it can wait. It's uh, just questioning it. Yeah, yeah certainly. So the um, treatment plans, obviously, um, the message has been wash your hands. So we want to continue to provide clean water uh, to the tap and uh, having that um, lime and the associated equipment with that, we believe would be essential to public health. Okay, so they don't have this at this point. This is something new or we got something broke down or exactly what is uh, this? Certainly, so um, this is going to be an upgrade uh, to the electrical equipment that feeds the lime into the water as part of the treatment process. I move to approve item number seven. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on item number seven? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Lucy, Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item number seven passes. Um, this takes us to our public hearings. Our first public hearing this evening is for the application by Lewis McDaniel requesting a special use permit to operate a car dealership at 12101 East US 40 Highway. This is new information only. Mr. Scannell, unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Here you go. Um, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, so at the February 25th Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission held a full public hearing on this application and had recommended approval of this application. And there's no new information to report on this case. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the council on this public hearing? I will declare the public hearing closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-020, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a vehicle sales business at 12101 East US 40 Highway in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, ordinance passes. Our next public hearing is for the application by Tom Gornick requesting a special use permit to operate a car dealership at 101 East US 24 Highway. This is new information only, Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor and members of the council, uh, the Planning Commission heard this uh, application at its February 25th uh, Planning Commission meeting and they had recommended approval of this application and there's no new information to report on this case. Are there any comments or questions from the council on the public hearing? I declare the public hearing closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-022, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a vehicle sales business at 101 
US 24 Highway in Independence, Missouri, second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes, ordinance passes. We have two non-ordinance action items this evening. The first um, does require a two thirds majority vote for approval due to residential property located within 300 feet of the establishment. Madam City Clerk, will you please read the non ordinance action items? Council action is requested regarding the change in ownership application received from Brew Biz LLC DBA Apex Ale Works for manufacturing, distilling, and blending intoxicating liquor license and a tavern and Sunday tavern intoxicating liquor license located at 4354 South Nolan Road. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. Madam City Clerk, item number two. The Public Utility Advisory Board recommends a rebate of unrestricted excess reserves to independent utility rate pairs amount to be determined either through the subcommittee on rates or city council. Is there any discussion on this item? Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilmember DeLucy. Madam Mayor, I think it's a pretty open-ended uh, request. I don't know what excess reserves we've got. I know we have unrestricted about um, $10 million in IPL money, but I'm not sure if they're talking about IPL money or water money or sewer money. I think it's pretty vague and I'm not in favor of it. Councilman Huff. Yes, Madam Mayor. I, uh, according to, and I, uh, we're all supposedly took the oath of the, on the uh, charter to uh, section 317 says that we're gonna get this back to these people these rate payers. I mean, well, we have a lot of hurting people out there. We have a lot of small businesses. We don't seem to be too concerned about this. I don't know how long you think these people can hang out there. It's time to give them some reason to even try to figure out. We have about 22 million there sitting there right now uh, without any problem that should be spun around here to try to help these businesses. I don't know uh, what everybody's thinking, but these businesses are not going to sit around. They cannot survive. These residents can't even go to the grocery store. They're scared to death. They're in the houses. They can't make mortgage payments. And this is their money. And it needs to be put out there. According to the charter, it is in there. And everyone here took an oath for that charter. I don't understand. It's even been done in the, the case thing 40 years ago. It's right in there again. And I don't understand why we're not. We, we was able the other day, we took that case and we decided that we could use it to do a muni fund. That we, the city could have a muni rate. We used that case. Now all of a sudden that case has disappeared and it's right in there the same case. 317 says you're gonna give the excess funds back to the rate payers here. And we have a lot of rate payers hurting here. And I, and you know, I, I just don't feel like, uh, you know, we should be talking Instead of all this other stuff, we should be worried about what's going on out here. Uh, you know, we should be looking at the general welfare, the safety and the health of our residents and our and our customer, our, our small businesses out here. No one's even looking at that. You know, it's fine and dandy that you might have a job and you're not in that service industry and you're getting you're getting paid every week. It's just like this. You know, I'm willing to give up two months of my council pay for these people to put it back into the system. I, I do get a paycheck and most of you do too. And I think it's ridiculous that we're not gonna address this. I don't know, I, I'm totally lost. I, I'm, I'm appalled that, you, that you're even thinking you're supposed to be representing the citizens and the, and the small business people here and you're all ignoring them. And it's right in black and white, section 317. There's not nothing, there's 
it's very direct. There's no gray area there. So um, I'm in favor of this and it's, it's wide open. That's right. But there's a lot of money out there. Uh, I've got some thing out. I can't find it right now, but it was millions of dollars. It wasn't like no 10 million. The 10 million you're probably thinking about, uh, Councilman, is the 10 month, 10 million that was uh, a, uh, the automatic meter reading that should have already been pushed back into the system as unrestricted because it was pushed to be no. The council voted on that. And they're still hanging on to the 10 million. Right there is 10 million. Or you think that would help these residents and some of these small business owners? But that's all I got to say. Councilman Robertson. One of my main concerns for the entire city, and yes, there are a number of people that are hurting. The, <clears throat> the excess funds that are in the enterprise funds and most people don't understand how the, all the funds work. The general fund is completely separate, cannot take money from any of the other funds except through pilots. And we are running low in the general fund. We are within two months of running out of money because of the financial stress of the virus. So number one is maintaining the general fund so that we can maintain a police presence a fire presence, all of the safety net things that the city provides are in the general fund. If we don't shore up the general fund, we are in bad, bad shape. We're gonna be in trouble. Secondly, we haven't fully funded the reserve funds. IPL reserve is below what we had passed an ordinance for as a council. So some of that money should be put and shore up the reserve fund for IPL. I'm not sure about the water department. I haven't seen the figures for the sewer or the water department, but those funds need to be shored up too. What if there was an emergency or a problem with either the water or the sewer? I mean, these, these are major, major um, public health things that need to be shored up and protected. And those are number one. That's what we have to take care of first. Uh, you're talking about giving excess money back to the ratepayers, and I'm for doing that but let's get through this crisis and let's shore up the general fund first. Madam Mayor, uh, yes. once again, uh, Councilman Robertson, you're not going anything with this charter says. They get in lieu, the pilot. After that, it no longer has any, power light has, is not there to support the general fund. You get the nine point, whatever, I call it 10%. That is it. You evidently do not read the charter very well or this case that went through there 40 years ago. It says in black and white, we do not support the general fund. Now, That's exactly right. I don't That's Blue exactly. Springs. I don't want Blue Springs, Lee Summit, and all these other ones. They don't have a slush fund of power and light. So, you know, why? What? they're in the same situation we're in. So why are we going to the trough and trying to take the money of our citizens, our rate payers, to bail out the general fund? Why does it? the city management figure out a different way. Now, if it all boils down to that's the only thing we can do, which I very, I, I don't think there's any research. This is just the easy way out instead of going out here and researching. Lee Summit doesn't have liberty, don't have, they're in the same situation. Their business are shut down. Uh, they're not going, they don't have a power and light that they just go rape anytime they want. This charter tells you, uh, Councilman DeLucci, you are one of the big supporters of this Charter all the time. That's all I hear. All this outcry down at the end of that table from a couple of you council members. This is a direct violation. This is going to go back to these people, these ratepayers, and your judgment will be on election day. All of you. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Yes, I've read the, Thank you, ma'am. I've read the charter a number of times, and it specifically provides for a reasonable accumulation of surplus. And I agree that $10 million in IPL sounds like a lot of money, or $15 million sounds like a lot of money in water. But when you're dealing with the production and distribution of electricity and the uh, distribution and purification of water, those numbers are not big numbers. So it is allowed under the charter to have a reasonable accumulation of surplus. Another section of the charter does in fact allow for our funds to borrow from other funds. It specifically is allowed in the charter. The Bondurant decision from 1980, I have read 
multiple times. That case dealt with the city taking funds from IPL. There was no arm's length transaction. Later on this agenda, what the Audit and Finance Committee is suggesting is that we have an arm's length transaction that we borrow money, give interest on the money back to IPL, back to water. Therefore, the enterprise funds are not giving any undue benefit to the general fund and the general fund is shoring up IPL and water. It is a mutually beneficial arrangement. I guess we could go ahead and borrow money from Commerce Bank or another bank and give them the interest money, but I personally would rather pay ourselves. I believe that this recommendation from PUAB was not well thought up. I appreciate that they wanna help the ratepayers. I really do. This is the way to help the ratepayers. We have already forgiven late fees. We have a moratorium on shutoffs. We are entering into an area where no one has ever been before. And it's smart to move deliberately and with caution. And I believe that the PUAB, God bless them. They wanna to move too quickly. I think it's a mistake and I'm not in favor of it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on non-ordinance action item number two? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Perkins. This ties into our emergency ordinance that we will be getting to in, in a later time in the meeting. But um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. City Manager, during through our uh, iShare program that we have through Community Service League, do we, I'm, I'm going by memory, do we not put in $300,000, $400,000 into that program to help with, with those who need help? I mean, what, what is our dollar figure that we put in to, to help with that? So, but, so one of those is um, councilmen used to help um, um, income-based income restrictions. The others is for um, seniors. But between the two, yes, it's in excess of $300,000. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman. Councilman Robertson. I just, just follow up with what Councilman Perkins just was talking about. I share, and I believe there's another program through the utilities or through CSL um, that does help with utility payments, in, especially in times where people have lost their jobs. Um, Mayor Weir, you and I, and I think uh, one other, were on the phone call with uh, Representative Cleaver when he talked about uh, the city being the beneficiary of some added CBGG funds. And I think this would be a good place to actually contribute to is the iShare as well as the other CSL fund, which would benefit a lot of the folks that would need the help during this time. Yes, Councilman Robertson, um, the Congressman Cleaver has been very much our advocate in helping us to secure additional CDBG money that is meant to be very flexible. So we will be discussing when that money arrives, um, what is the best way to expend those funds and leverage those for the benefit of our community. I thoroughly agree that we are going to need to have a regional coordinated response to the many needs of our citizens and our businesses throughout the continuation of this pandemic and the recovery. Um, we don't have a clear picture of what those needs are at this point in time. We do have um, several um, opportunities to receive funding through the federal government, um, primarily through coming through the state and the county, but also a fourth uh, program that is expected that we're working very hard to make sure that those funds come directly to the city. Um, this is certainly a huge need, um, but I agree. I don't think that the recommendation from the PUAB is nearly specific enough. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's needed at this time to return a rebate to every single IPL customer. 
Um, I think it's something that we will continue to monitor as to that need. We work closely with CSL and many other organizations in the region to help us advise us regarding that. I hope that citizens will reach out directly to us and make us aware of those needs so that we can best use the resources that we currently have and additional resources that may be coming our way. Is there anything, any other discussion regarding item number two? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? No. Doherty? No. DeLucy? No. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? No. Item number two fails. This takes us to our second readings. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-017, an ordinance authorizing a development agreement with Truman Heritage Habitat for Humanity, THHFH, as a qualifying community housing development organization for the development of affordable housing, utilizing home program funds in amount not to exceed $399,449, second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Yes, yes. Councilman Hoff. Yes, uh, this is another one of these that I think should be pushed back. I'm not against it, but that's $400,000 sitting there. I just, I'm totally lost on what's going on here. Why we're not concerned about our residents and these other people out here. We're worried about spending four hundred more thousand dollars I think these things, they're, they're great. They're great programs. I'm not saying that, but we, we can wait a couple months to see how this thing all rolls out, but just keep spending the money. Mr. Same manager. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, these are federal grant dollars through the what's known as the home fund. Again, restricted in what they can be utilized for. They can really only be utilized for this specific purpose. Uh, with these dollars, our partners at Truman Heritage Habitat for Humanity uh, will be able to award two new single family homes. Uh, they'll be constructed and given to low income or income eligible families. Uh, with zero interest. Um, so this will help out um, families in our community who will be able to own their own home, uh, probably otherwise would not be able to realize the, um, the benefits of home ownership without this program. And again, these dollars are restricted specifically for this use, can't be used for any other uh, city service. Is there a Madam other... Mayor, if I may. Yes, Perkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, a lot of these, the fundings before pre-pandemic, as we were moving forward with city businesses, a lot of these funds were already set that are allocated for specific use, uh, specifically for this amount, helps the independence residents, those who qualify for these programs. And we need to really be careful on how we grandstand and we don't do this, use this type of, of emergency situation that we're in to overplay what we're trying to do here with city business. A lot of this stuff has already been in the works. A lot of this money has already been pre-designated by federal grant money, state money that can be used specifically. Even if we wanted to hold off on this project, those funds could be spent nowhere else, but this would actually hurt one, our economy, two, the residents and those who would be uh, available to use these funds. So we need to be very careful as we move forward and let's get our motions in check as we move forward with city business. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes, ordinance passes. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-018, an ordinance authorizing a purchase order with key equipment and supply company for an Elgin Broom street sweeper for $170,602.20 and appropriating $170,602.20 from the general fund unassigned fund balance. Second and final reading. Madam Mayor. 
Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. City Manager. Yes, Madam Mayor, um, as I mentioned at the onset of this meeting, um, I asked our department directors to prioritize items um, specifically that had a life safety issue associated with them. The purchase of the street sweeper, while it's in accordance with our Independence for All strategic plan, beautifying our main thoroughfares and our neighborhoods, uh, this item was put on um, pre-pandemic um, as we are really trying to hold the line on budget and manage through a very uncertain and tumultuous time. Uh, it's my request that the council uh, remand this item back to staff um, so that we can preserve the general fund fund balance to the best of our ability. As you'll hear later on, we are going to have to more than likely spend fund balance down to na navigate through the remaining 90 days of the fiscal year. Uh, so this is an item we would like to postpone uh, until such time as we feel it's fiscally responsible to move forward on. Okay, thank you, Mr. City Manager. Is there a motion to remand this item back to staff? So moved. So move. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the motion to remand this item back to staff? Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Salusi? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dan Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Motion passes. Madam City Clerk. Madam Mayor. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt there. If we can stay on the same line of, of discussion, we're talking about budgets, if I may. With our, since we're not purchasing this, our street sweeping will be non existent. Is that my understanding, Mr. City Manager? Um, we have one street sweeper right now in the fleet, Councilmember Perkins. Um, I will tell you it's got a lot of hours on the engine, um, so its reliability is minimized at best. Um, but at such times as it's functional, um, we'll do that. But I do want to let the council know that its, it's reliability is, is very unpredictable. I understand. So if we're thinking ahead during the budgets and what we're trying to do here, the um, I believe WPC does an interfund transfer to public works and in, in several hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is that something that we can look at for maybe they can keep those funds if we're not street sweeping? I'll let you guys have that internal budget discussion, but I think that's something maybe worthy of discussion. Yeah, let me let me work with the director of the water pollution control. I would for the public real quick, just, just clarify, because you bring up a good point. Um, the water pollution control um, um, department does contribute to the cost of the street sweeping operation. On its surface, that probably sounds strange. We don't do street sweeping. I mean, a, a side benefit of it is the beautification of the main thoroughfares in the neighborhoods. Um, but really, the street sweeping operation is done as part of our um, combined, um, what we call our MS4 permit, which allows us to operate the stormwater system. Uh, so the idea is that we clean up the grime and debris that is in the gutters and keep those from going into the um, watersheds and the water system. So I just wanted to clarify for the public why we do spend those dollars. Uh, in part out of the water pollution control department. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-019, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to approve a cost share agreement with the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission for the US 24 cost share project, phase one, and increasing appropriations, second and final reading. Sorry, discussion on this bill. Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dean Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. I'm say clerk. Bill number Bill number 20-021, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of additional funding from the U.S. Department of Justice, U.S. Marshals Service through the Joint Law Enforcement Operations Program for use by the police department in making the necessary appropriations. Second and final reading. Hearing discussion on this bill. Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? 
Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dan Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Madam State Clerk. Bill number 20-023, an ordinance admitting City of Independence Power and Light Department schedule of electric rates to be effective for the monthly billing period beginning October 1st, 2020, under which electric utility service shall be furnished to all customers of Independence Power and Light. Second and final reading. Is there a discussion on this bill? Madam yes. Mayor. No. Robertson. Councilman Robertson, I'll go to you first. Okay. Um, yes, there's several things that I want to mention, and there's actually two things that I would like to amend. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm very disappointed that we have not had a public hearing. Um, we don't have uh, any public service commission like the rest of the state has, except for our PUAB, for ratepayers to come and hear about the rates and give their input. We have not done that. There has been no public input on this, and I feel very badly that we have not allowed uh, for a public hearing at the PUAB meetings. I've mentioned this on a couple of occasions in my closing comments, and I wish we still could have a public hearing and have public input. Um, there's no other forum except for people to call us directly. So that's, first of all, my main concern um, secondly, I am concerned that there is no sunset provision in this. Um, and the wording on the second page of the document I have, which is basically titled residential at the top, um, under rate options, which is the last paragraph of the second page, basically says that people can continue in the frozen rate for an indefinite period. It doesn't say when. Uh, I realize that the the old rates are going to have actually an increase in electric rates in them. So I guess that will encourage people to switch over to the new rate structure. But the other concern going along with this, besides not having a sunset provision in the old rate structure, is that it further complicates the rate structure. We already have a very, very complicated rate structure, which we're going to continue. And we're going to add another rate structure on top of it. Um, so it has not simplified any things, that, anything, at least not yet. I, I wish we had just simply gone to a new rate structure and moved everybody over. But since we're not going to do that, at least from this document, I think we at the very least should put in a sunset provision for at least three years from now and say by the year uh, 2023, uh, October of 2023, this is supposed to go into effect in October. So October of 2023, I think that everyone that is still in the old rate structure will be moved over to the new rates. And that would be one of my first um, amendments. The second has to do with the municipal rate. And I, I think it's irresponsible for us to not say the municipal rate is the same as the large industrial rate because it is it's basically the same cost per kilowatt hour. So I think we should just simply move the municipal rate and make it the same. That's what the charter talks about anyway, that we pay the same as other businesses uh, in the city. So why not re uh, move the municipal rate, remove it, and put the city in the large industrial rate category? So I would make that motion that we do both of those things and encourage the PUAB again to hold a public hearing. Councilmember DeLucy. Um, Madam Mayor, I'm concerned um, the infamous Bondurant decision that we've heard so much about tonight, that in fact did uh, specify that the problem that occurred back in 1980 was the city was getting a benefit from IPL that it wasn't paying for and therefore IPL was damaged. I believe that by our adopting this rate structure, a couple of different things are happening. Number one, we're codifying the fact that we are not paying for streetlights 
And that was one of the specific examples within that Bondurant decision that Judge Bondurant held was not allowed under our charter. And the second thing is that there should not be a special rate for municipal function. As I understand the rates as proposed, all of the city's utility usage will be gathered together and that will be the one rate. And the Truman Memorial Building, I'm sure has a different usage than the Sermon Center, than the Pioneer Spring Cabin, than the National Frontier Trails Museum. Bondurant specifically held that the value of power supplied to the city should be calculated at the same rate as is applied to other customers which consume similar amounts of power. I understand that this council and, and the city administration really does want a new rate, but this simply complicates it. it. I think it doubles the number of rates. It does not allow a sunset. And we're struggling right now with half staff and people working from home. I don't think it's realistic for us to say, let's have a new rate and the city gets a break in its uh, price is July 1. Everybody else has to wait till October. And by the way, Delucci, your 11 cents a kilowatt hour, if you want to stay where you're at, now becomes 19 cents a kilowatt hour. I wish that there had been a public hearing. I wish we had studied it more. I don't see why we're rushing. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, would you like to respond? Um, well, I, not to the matters of policy, but just, just to clarify, yeah. um, we, we did check with the city attorney. I, I know she's on here. Um, her interpretation of, of Bond Ranch, as I understand, and, and Shannon, please correct me uh, if, if I misspeak for you, but that we, we can charge ourselves. We can't be any better than what somebody else can certainly get out there, but we, we are able to charge ourselves what a like user would be and we fit in with those large industrial users based on our, our volume as quote unquote the city. Um, we, um, um, I, I don't remember what else Councilman DeLucy said. That was just the one thing that I would clarify. The rest I think I would probably deviate from. Um, I, I think there were some policy statements in there. There were, okay. thank you. Um, Councilman, Roberts and Andalusia and the entire council. The P, I've said this many times throughout our discussion regarding rates and other decisions um, affecting our public utilities. The PUAB is wholly within their authority to hold a public hearing. They don't need our permission. They don't need our direction to do that. So I um, don't know why the public, the PUAB chose not to hold a public hearing on this matter when it was clearly articulated from the council dais that that was a desire of the council. Um, I, my concern at this late stage as the same manager and all of our departments are struggling to uh, put together a budget for that our charter says needs to be approved by the end of June. Um, I'm certainly um, appreciative of the concerns that have been expressed, um, but I can tell you um, as somebody who serves on the Utilities Rates Committee with Councilman Huff and Councilman Van Camp, we've gotten, I think, some very good insights from our Acting Power and Light uh, Director and our Assistant City Manager about the complexity of granting the 6% rate reduction that this council advocated for and a majority approved. Um, simplifying the rate, which was the direction of the council and getting this done in time for the city manager and to be able to prepare a budget, which now is obviously infinitely more complex than it was just a few weeks ago. 
Um, so, Mr. City Manager, my question, and again, I don't want to be reactionary or, um, but how much more time is it realistic to take with this discussion before we need to tell you what our rate is going to be so that the budget can be prepared in time? And the budget, of course, does get by charter a full public hearing. Yeah, so our timeline with the budget schedule, uh, we are going to need to have those final decisions made by a week from today, April 13th. And that always was our timeline based on uh, the charter. Um, so the charter has a certain date that we have to present this to the city council. That's usually that first study session in May. Uh, so I think that's around um, May 11th this year, if memory serves correctly. Um, so we have to be able to do document production, get your council budget books made. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so um, final budget decisions, departments have uh, been directed to submit this to the team tomorrow, uh, and then we're going to make our final decisions by the end of the week so that the budget team can put the books together for the council um, and submit this to you on May 11th. Um, Councilman Robertson, I want to get back to your motions. Um, I know you had two items. I would ask maybe it would be best to consider those separately. If you could just reiterate what they, the two motions that you, or the motion, the items that you want reconsidered or amended. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, the first item is that we add a three year sunset provision uh, in the document. It's not really in the ordinance, but it's in the in the accompanying document so that by October of 2023, everyone will be migrated into the new rate structure. The old rate structure will go away. So that's my first motion. Okay. If someone that will discuss it. Well, well I just want to, okay. Um, Becky, if you would just record the motion in the second. Um, I want to get back to the um, discussion on the bill and make sure that we haven't, I haven't overlooked anybody if there were any more comments regarding the bill. Okay. Um, and Councilman Robertson, would you just reiterate, I'm not looking for you to make the motion yet, but just tell me again the, what the second part of it was. The first was the sunset and the other piece was- The other one to um, remove the municipal rate and move the city into the large industrial rate category. Okay, so the first motion, um, Madam City Clerk, will you read the motion to amend? The motion to amend is to have a three year sunset and that provision is for October of 2023 where all of the rate structures will move into the new rate classes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mayor, Amen. Mayor, if I may. Oh, yes, go ahead. Mr. City Manager, with the first motion, other than just a policy decision to that change, any uh, budgetary concerns that you might have? No, not from a budget perspective. Five years, it'd certainly be an eternity in municipal budgeting. So we would be um, probably, quite honestly, best practices are that we would need to be looking at rates uh, in that five-year window anyway, especially as we continue to uh, transform services at Power and Light. Um, for the five or three years? It's three years, Zach. Oh, three years, I'm sorry. Um, I promise I can do basic math, uh, 2023. Um, okay, so yeah, we would be supportive of that though, um, in terms of, it, it, it would fall in line with our financial policies and our best practices anyway. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, please call a roll. Council members Huff? No. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Weir? Yes. Becky, I lost count. Tell me if that motion passed or failed. It passed 4-3. Okay, motion passes. Um, Councilman Robertson, would you like to make your second motion? 
So my, my second motion is to eliminate the municipal, the separate municipal rate and, mu and move the city rate into the large industrial category, which is the same, by the way, um, the same rate. Is there a second? I'll second it. It's um, Mr. State Manager. Um, you want to clarify that that the per kilowatt hour is the same in the large industrial as what we are um, has been proposed in the municipal rate. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, um, we would be in line with similar users in that class. Okay. Mr. City Manager. Yes. Why was there a municipal rate separate and apart from industrial then? I'm confused. Mm -hmm. We started this process, the council recall, we started this a year ago. Um, we went, to, as staff went down that road of calling it municipal rate, but um, one found that problematic um, with bonders to pull ourselves apart into a separate category. Uh, and then second of all, realized that we were similar to those other users um, so this, this is just really cleaning up uh, a process that started two years ago and putting it where it's more appropriate now. Thank you. So council member DeLucy, in my view and in, in looking at this and, and considering this, I felt it was more transparent to call out the municipal rate separate from a large industrial. It just makes it very clear what, um, what the city is paying and how much usage we have collectively. It doesn't make any difference to me where we put what it, you call I, it, what you, I call it, but right. I did feel like it gave a level of transparency um, to assign the city a separate rate so everybody knows, you know, very clearly what, what that is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Councilman Van uh, Yes. Uh, Mr. City Manager, I was concerned that the utility uh, for municipal, we had uh, diverse. In other words, it wasn't wholly on one schedule that some place that was smaller, say a smaller uh, power station, wouldn't be under such a guise if, if we had the separate instead of uh, under the handicap of having to do a rate that was uh, that's why we had the board municipal there so that we could separate. Uh, we would still bill councilman the, the city, if you will, for all of its facilities. It's just um, a, a terminology change here, but, but bills will still be strung together for quote unquote the city here on the same schedule. Okay, so then when people look at this, they could look at it and see what the municipalities are doing. It wouldn't be lumped in with uh, the other terminology. Correct. So you I, I think for transparency, that would be a better situation. Right. And to your point, Councilman, you know, like if in your district somebody wanted to know what the station five had for utilities for a year, we'd be able to pull that easily for them. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Okay, Madam City Clerk, will you please read the motion and call the roll? Yes, the motion is to remove the separate municipal rates and then move the city rates into the large industrial rate. Council members Huff? No. Perkins? No, sorry. Doherty? No. DeLucy? No. Roberson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Ware? Um, no. And Councilman Roberson, just for the reason that I stated earlier, I feel it's more transparent to or to um, present that separately. I don't disagree with you. I just um, feel that 
for the reasons of transparency, I would prefer to have it um, presented separately. So this brings us back to the um, ordinance. So Madam City Clerk, we call, is there any further discussion on the ordinance as amended? Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on 20023 as amended. Council Members Hoff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Gordy? Yes. DeLucy? No. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Um, this takes us to our first reading. They received their first reading this evening and their second reading for consideration on April the 20th. We do have three emergency ordinances this evening that will require a two thirds majority vote for passage. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20-024, an ordinance approving a rezoning from District C2 General Commercial to District R2 Single Family Residential Large Lot for the property located at 3400 South R.D. Mize Road in Independence, Missouri. Bill number 20-025, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a body art service at 3501 South Sterling Avenue, Suite C in Independence, Missouri. Bill 20-026, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a car wash at 18819 East 39th Street in Independence, Missouri. Bill number 20-027, an ordinance authorizing execution of a municipal agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for Mo Route 12 Truman Road resurfacing public improvements project. Bill number 20-028, an ordinance authorizing a contract with Terry Snelling Construction for the Waterfall Park Spillway Repair Project, project number 70131703 for an amount not to exceed $493,116, authorizing future minor change orders for an amount not to exceed $49,311.60 and or time extensions and increasing appropriations. Bill number 20-029, an ordinance vacating an existing sanitary sewer easement located at 20900 East Bunshu Road. Bill number 20-030, an ordinance amending ordinance number 19005 by adding the acquisition of easements on four new parcels related to the College Street Improvements Phase 1, project number 70111805, in order to acquire general utility easements for the project. Bill number five zero, excuse me, bill number 20-502, an ordinance adopting amendments to the fiscal year 2019 to 2020 budget, which was approved by ordinance number 19017. Bill number 20-502, an ordinance adopting amendments to the fiscal year 2019 to 2020 budget, which was approved by ordinance number 19017, second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Uh, Madam Mayor, which one was this? Is this 502? This is 502, Councilman. Yes, I did have a couple questions. Okay. Mr. City Manager, uh, on this bill 502, section four, what is the 27,615 that's going to the Adventure Oasis? that's being taken out of this, the uh, parks thing. What is that for? Uh, I'm trying to navigate there, Councilman, but generally speaking, what this ordinance is doing is um, appropriating revenues uh, that were generated um, uh, and then changing the budget to reflect what was actually spent. So this is reconciling activities that have already occurred. So um, with Adventure Oasis, this is probably just reflecting the activities that happened there from July 1 uh, to the time the pool closed at the end of August. Um, again, I'm- Okay, so this is from last year. Yeah, this, this would be from last year. Just, I call this the balancing the checkbook 
uh, ordinance. So we do these quarterly and this would just be reconciling uh, the activities from the pool last season. So I assume then on section six of that same ordinance, uh, the 19,365 on the new utility building system that we've already paid for, what, what does that entail? Is that, uh, what, what, what do you shore up there with about $20,000? Is it a, but that had to be added or what? Um, if Dan Montgomery is still on the line. Uh, Dan, could you speak to specifically what that activity was? I'm trying to recollect if that was going back to make some changes to the billing system when we were going through all this power and light stuff. Seems like there were some uh, charges back then, but I can't recollect cor cor exactly right now. So, uh, Dan, this has not been, this has not added on. This is something in the past is what you're saying also. Correct. It would have been something that came up since last year and we just made payment on it because we didn't have the authorization to pay for it at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. And say clerk? Bill number 20-503, an ordinance approving a final plat for RB Commercial Center in Independence, Missouri and declaring an emergency. Bill number 20-503. An ordinance approving a final plat for RV Commercial Center in Independence, Missouri and declaring an emergency. Second and final reading. Any discussion on this bill? <clears throat> Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Alderson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir. Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 20-504, an ordinance authorizing interfund loan to provide it to provide emergency funding to the general fund and declaring an emergency. Bill number 20-504, an ordinance authorizing interfund loan to provide emergency funding to the general fund and declaring an emergency. Second and final reading. Mr. City Manager, this went through our audit, our Council Audit and Finance Committee last week, I believe. You gave a very um, thorough assessment of how you see the budget uh, in several different scenarios for the benefit of those who were not able to access that meeting. Um, could you please um, just give a brief explanation about the justification for this uh, action at this time. Yes, certainly. Um, as Mayor Weir said last Wednesday, we uh, made a presentation to the Council's Audit and Finance Committee that consists of Councilman DeLucy, Robertson, and Perkins. Um, the first part of that presentation, we really focused on how had the fiscal year been going prior to the, the coronavirus and uh, pandemic hitting uh, the United States, in particular, Missouri and Independence. Um, with regard to that, um, the budget was going okay. Um, we um, had found that we were trending towards about a $2 million shortfall in the general fund, which um, we quickly caught that. Um, implemented several measures to try to make sure we did not adversely impact uh, or tried to mitigate, I should say, the impact to the general funds fund balance. Uh, so we put in a hiring freeze. We cut spending uh, way down to some of the critical items, deferring or delaying other capital projects. Uh, and heading into uh, March, uh, our budget staff was estimating that our general fund fund balance loss would have been somewhere around half a million dollars. So we managed that problem from a $2 million shortfall down to about a half a million dollar shortfall. Uh, I think some of the measures that we had in place would have probably further mitigated that loss, um, but to be able to um, realize the savings of $1.5 million, I think we were, we were certainly trending in the right direction. By the way, the, that shortfall was uh, 
really contributed from a couple of factors. One was uh, continuing to see a loss of uh, sales tax at our brick and mortar sites. And then also in some of our um, previously negotiated work agreements, particularly in public safety, uh, some of the overtime costs were um, driving the budget to, to have some structural imbalance there. But we were working around that and mitigating that to the best of our ability. When the um, coronavirus really began to hit here in Independence, our community acted very quickly to try to take public safety, uh, public health measures to protect uh, our community and, and our workforce. Uh, Mayor declared her state of emergency on March the 12th. Uh, we began to close our city facilities to the public, uh, canceled a number of public events. Uh, and then as more information came in day by day, we continued to restrict activities. Um, with the county, Jackson County order, uh, the stay at home order, uh, that really began to then change the way retail businesses operated in the city. They were either prohibited from operating or had to greatly modify the way they deliver those services. And then certainly the governor's order, which went into effect today, which the biggest portion of that is now a restriction on occupancy, how many people can go into those essential businesses that are still allowed to operate. Um, you don't put those kind of changes in place and not see an adverse impact on the economy. And, and that's not just an independence thing that is happening across the country, across the globe. Um, some of these communities that we all probably recognize as being uh, affluent, like Overland Park caught my attention. Uh, they've moved to suspend wage increases, um, to do furloughs of, of their workforce. I've seen a number of cities that, and private sector agencies that have laid off employees. Um, we began to do an assessment of how that was going to impact independence uh, and what we were recognizing was that within the remaining 90 days of the fiscal year, we were going to see the general fund lose $4.8 million in anticipated revenues that we would have otherwise seen come in. Uh, the general fund is made up um, in large part by sales tax, 23% of the general fund budget is sales tax revenue. Uh, so knowing that we are losing that, you, you right away take a quarter of the budget out. Um, but then when we you know, have closed facilities, when we have um, altered scheduling, that's impacted things like municipal court fines, uh, building permits, et cetera. So all told, we're estimating 34% of general fund revenues are going to see a, a very severe negative decline in their anticipated revenues to the tune of about $4.8 million for the remainder of this fiscal year. The uh, general fund uh, only has six and a half million dollars in fund balance right now. So you take the 4.8 million, we think this is going to, to draw down on fund balance and a half million we were already anticipating losing. I'm talking about losing $5.3 million of your $6.5 million fund balance. 80% um, of the general fund budget is personnel. Um, so even if we broke all of those remaining spending for the year, um, we still have personnel costs uh, that we would need to, to mitigate for. So we've looked at a number of different measures. I know furloughs are, are commonly referenced. The reason furloughs really don't make sense for us here in Independence is that we have a number of, of um, staff at the Parks, Rec, and Tourism Department that quite frankly, their programming had already been scheduled out through March. Um, the Parks and Tourism Director is not bringing those employees back, so the remainder uh, would only in 90 days generate about $60,000 of savings. Um, the rest of our employees are continuing to work. Um, the Overland Park example I mentioned earlier, they have an outdoor nature center, they have two community centers, they have the Deanna Rose Nature Animal Farm, whatever that thing is. Uh, so they have a lot more of these you know, recreational facilities that we just don't have here in Independence. So we don't have nearly the parts and workforce that some of those other communities do. Uh, so my recommendation uh, in looking at the budget for the remainder of the year uh, is to implement a hard hiring freeze to not have any more uh, hiring done for the remainder of the year uh, to eliminate all non-essential spending. Like, you know, we just put this uh, street sweeper on hold tonight. Um, in doing that, we believe that we can navigate uh, the budget without dipping below a 5% reserve for the remainder of the fiscal year. But where this really becomes problematic is as this continues to trend beyond the start of the new fiscal year. 
Um, we got a little bit more optimistic news today. The projections and modeling for the coronavirus originally were showing a peak in late May for Missouri. Now they're advancing that by 30 days to about April 19th here. Uh, so our social distancing, our stay at home orders are appearing to have an impact here. Um, but that said, we still forecast that this could carry on into the, the um, uh, next fiscal year. When I say this carry on, I mean the economic recession. Um, I don't think that you're just going to see the economy snap back the day that we say state of emergencies are over. Uh, as was said earlier, I think by Council Member Huff tonight, small businesses, which are a bread and butter of the independence economy, every day that this goes on, they're pushed closer to the brink of never reopening. Um, it's generally agreed by economists that there's three areas that are probably going to suffer mightily every day that these measures are in place. Uh, that's cruise lines, which our budget fortunately doesn't rely on cruise lines. It's also brick and mortar establishments and it's small businesses. And those other two are obviously essential to our budget. So our recommendation to the council so that we don't have to um, permanently reduce city staffing, permanently eliminate basic city services across the board is to establish a COVID-19 relief fund. Um, and to give us the authority to draw a line of credit up to $25 million. Uh, we talked to the Audit and Finance Committee about uh, putting restrictions in place on that uh, coming monthly, the presentations to the council about our budget position. Um, I am working with the department directors, as I mentioned earlier, to reduce the budget for next year um, so that one, we don't need to draw down as much from this. Um, but two, to create lines of revenue that will help replenish fund balance and very quickly repay any amount that is borrowed from um, uh, this line of credit. It was uh, presented by Councilwoman DeLucy earlier uh, that we pay interest on this. That is true. Um, in your packet, as prepared by Brian Kidney, is a statement of what that interest would look like. Um, we estimate that if the full $25 million were drawn down, which again, we are trying mightily to avoid that, but that would generate three quarters of a million dollars in interest uh, that's not being paid to a private bank, but instead take back to the funds from which uh, uh, the line of credit's drawn down on. So that's a truncated summary of where we see ourselves today, uh, the recommendation that we have. Um, we'd certainly be happy to answer any questions about that. Okay, and the recommendation before us, just to um, reiterate, was um, brought first to the Audit and, Finan Audit and Finance Committee, who unanimously recommended um, this um, bring for, brought forward to the Council. So, with that, are there comments or questions on this emergency? Councilman Huff? Yes, I have a couple. Um, Number one is um, we haven't balanced the budget in the last three years. We went after retirees' health care. Just wondering, what's the plan to repay for borrowing this? If we haven't made it in three years. Now we're going to add some more debt uh, to our utility out here, and, and I just wondered how we're going to to repay that. According to this eight eight that everybody keeps your it says you can only borrow 75% of your estimated revenues. And I don't, I don't know that we have any revenues that we're weighing this against. This also is fund to fund. It has nothing to do with enterprise funds. Once again, we're not looking at the Bondurant decision. We're not looking at the charter. Um, the other thing here is uh, why was the PUAB given an opportunity to provide this recommendation looking at this we might need 25 million by the end of the year what's the big hurry tonight why is it an emergency um i got quite a few questions i don't know why we didn't go to the bond market i have a little problem with with this and the reason why i do Ms. Uh, councilman delucci has hit this quite a bit the street lights for instance um when the street lights were uh, put in the city said they told power and light hey you buy them it's about $12 million and we're gonna repay you. Well, guess what? We've never been repaid. That's $12 million. We have electric cars out there, $330,000. They have not been paid for. Now you're asking for $25 million. And when it comes down to bottom line, we'll have a little forgiveness. And once again, it's put on the ratepayers' backs again. 
I just can't endorse anything like this. I think it's against the charter. 8.8 .8 does not even, even come close to answering this. I don't know who come up with that, but somebody, where you got the city councilor on here, right? Uh, Mr. City Manager, I like, I, I'm totally lost why this is even, right? This is inner funds between other departments. Like earlier was talking if uh, water pollution control needed the sweet sweep or they could go to public works and but that money's already there i just don't understand where you're gonna get the revenues to pay for this you don't have the revenues now to balance the budget how are you going to get revenues to pay the the interest or anything you know uh the thing is is that i just feel that down the road somebody's going to say oh it's forgiveness and here we back again no wonder we got the highest rates this has been going on forever at power and light forever and we're going to continue it's you're, the big saying here is all for the children is this really for the children putting us i mean I, I i'm totally exhausted on this thing but that's my thoughts i don't know i just don't understand why we don't go out in the bond market and have some kind of transparency so that we know, you know that we're holding uh management to the candle here saying hey you are going to pay back this way it's an escape it's the easy way we have not exhausted all the alternatives out there we hit like I said earlier, there, these other cities are facing the same thing and they don't have a slush fund that they can go dig out on the backs of the ratepayers. They're figuring out some other way of doing it. I don't know that we've done our homework to figure out. I know this is the easiest way, but is it the right way? We need to get out there and investigate. We have plenty of time. If we have the rest of the year, a city manager just said he's not worried about, you know, as, as things come down, he don't even know if he's going to use it. So why are we in a big push tonight? That's all I have. Madam well, Mayor, there was a lot said there, but I'll go ahead. I just want to say that I don't understand how much it would cost to go out to bond council. I don't really know how long it will take to get the bond approved. I look at this as a line of credit in my business when I was first starting out. I didn't have anything and I just needed to sleep at night. So I needed to have a line of credit knowing that if push came to shove, that money was available immediately. And I didn't take that line of credit unless I needed it. I asked the city manager before our meeting tonight, if we're gonna be paying market rate interest on the, mo the money, the line of credit. The answer is yes. I asked him, are we going to actually repay it? People don't believe we're gonna repay it. He said, yes, we're gonna repay it. We have to repay it. I also said, Mr. City Manager, I have heard many, many people say that we are a frivolous council, that we waste money. So can you please tell me, are we gonna proceed with some of these projects that people seem to be upset about? For example, the uh, square redevelopment, the Justice Center, the CID on 23rd and 291. I mean, are we looking at using this money as a plug in order for us to continue with spending that is controversial? And I guess that's my question to you, Mr. City Manager. Um, Council Member Delucy, uh, those are our decisions. <laughs> I mean, I would say, obviously the world has changed immensely since um, the last time we met on March the 13th. Um, those projects are certainly the the justice center is you know there's there's nothing for at this point for the council to consider on that the square streetscaping project um i mean those are decisions that the council is going to have to make about whether we feel that we um should do those projects if we can afford to do those projects my only concern, as Councilman Huff has said, is the safety and security of our community and ensuring that we don't have to take some of the measures that other cities have taken. To answer the question of what are other cities doing, they're laying people off, they're doing furloughs, um, and they're all trying to figure out how to manage through this just like we are. And that's not just cities. In Jackson County, those are cities all over the country. And I am on calls all day, every week, with mayors from around the country, Councilman Huff, with 
um, the President of the United States, the Governor of the State of Missouri, and many other people who are all dealing with these same decisions. So we are learning a lot and using our network to understand what other people around the area are doing. We have a call every week with the county um, administrator and the city manager. I'm in constant contact with the mayors of, around the metropolitan area, with the Mid-America Regional Council on which I serve on their board as their treasurer. So there is a lot of discussion happening about how various cities are dealing with this. And we are fortunate that we have these utilities we, um, and the funds that they generate, but we also have to absorb the expenses that they generate, which other cities don't. Um, so council member Lucy, I would say, um, Mr. City Manager, I didn't mean to cut you off if you want to respond to that, but these are decisions for the council to make. Um, I think that, you know, at this point in time, um, we have to be laser focused on maintaining our city operations so that our employees can be out there serving the citizens. Um, so everything else that you mentioned, you know, those are all things that are certainly on the table and this council will decide if they're gonna bring those forward and proceed with any of those projects. Mr. C. Major, anything else? Um, no, I, that's a good summary. The, the only other thing I would say from, from an other city standpoint is many of those cities have um, probably went into this better financially prepared um, because their fund balance is not only met, generally accepted the best practices of 16%, but far exceeded that. Um, we were working our way upwards. Um, every year we've been depositing money into our general fund fund balance after this council adopted a 16% reserve. We were trending upwards. Uh, this was a unforeseen event that, that certainly pulling it down um, in the opposite direction. So that, that was another benefit that those cities have that we don't have at our disposal. So Madam Mayor, just so I understand, nothing has, nothing has gone on regarding the Justice Center or the square redevelopment or anything. Those, those issues are still to be determined by this council. Um, I can't Mr. make the redevelopment meeting, so I don't know. Yeah, so um, Mr. City Manager, um, if you want to talk specifically about the Justice Center um, and where we are with that project, and then um, I know Adam Norris is also on the call, and he is the staff liaison for the um, honor roll committee, so maybe an update on where that is in terms of what we have planned and what we have committed in terms of expenditure. Um, with regard to the Justice Center project, uh, this was the, the concept of constructing a new police campus facility adjacent to the Independence Utility Center at 23rd and 291 um, by forming a community improvement district uh, where in which businesses in that district would charge a 1% sales tax to generate the revenue to support the debt service on a construction project. Um, about two years ago, the council had approved an agreement with um, J.E. Dunn uh, Construction to do uh, initial phase one uh, in which the council had asked J.E. Dunn to review old studies and make sure that construction of a new facility was, in fact, uh, the recommended best practice um, JE Dunn completed that work uh, that, um, however, moving forward uh, was looking like it was going to be an exponentially higher cost than uh, what we as a city management felt was responsible for the council to do. Uh, so we have terminated that relationship with JE Dunn and at this time that project is effectively dead. The only way that project could move forward at this time would be to reissue a request for a proposal find a new development partner, and that would not be the recommendation of staff at this juncture, simply because we're trying to stay laser focused on the crisis at hand. Doesn't mean we wouldn't recommend and support uh, moving forward with that later, but, but at this exact moment, it wouldn't be. Uh, with regard to the square streetscape, the last time that the uh, committee on roll committee was able to formally meet, uh, they had approved um, 
about a $3 million project, various sources of funds, including the street sales tax, um, the community development block grant, other grant dollars, federal and state grant dollars. Um, that project would have, next step would have been working on design. So doing some of the initial surveying work, doing some of the initial architectural and engineering work, getting documents that would have been used then to, to go to bid. Um, so at this time, there was no immediate uh, construction activity set to begin. Um, we probably, as, council, as the mayor said, would need to reconvene with that committee and decide if the timeline that we'd envisioned is still the timeline that we want to follow um, or if we want to defer, delay that or modify it in some way. Uh, policy decision there, but there's no imminent construction activity uh, planned for that project whatsoever. Mr. City Manager, excuse me, I'm just a little confused. The committee um, wants to use CDBG money. They've committed three and a half million. Is that what you not, said? Not, not exclusively. It was about a three million dollar total project with various funding sources uh, that include <coughs> CDBG, street sales tax, grant dollars. That would have all then been. Um, contingent on city council approval, of course, okay. but that was the last time the council, uh, that committee met. So that was their recommendation. Um, but just as if the audit and finance committee has made their recommendation Wednesday and now it's before the full council, a similar process would have needed to play out for that project. They haven't spent any money yet, have they? No. Thank you. Madam Mayor, if I may. Yes. Councilman Perkins. With uh, regard to the street, the square uh, design, we've we've allocated time frames. We've allocated funding sources. This was going to be a study session that we were going to have pre-pandemic. Obviously, that's been put on hold to to lay it out what the uh, on the roll committee has been working on. Um, the square design was one, and the 24 highways the other. Uh, Inglewood uh, Arts in that community was another one that we were working on. We do not have the authority to spend money. We do have the authority to recommend to move forward to the full body of, of the council to, to make discussions for that. To the um, emergency ordinance at hand, the Audit and Finance Committee met and we took this in a way that was most serious, obviously. I don't believe any of us had thought that we would be having a meeting to discuss emergency um, funds where we are at to help stabilize some of the, the gaps that are, are we are facing. 23% um, of our sales taxes is, is a lot of money. A good portion of that has taken the hit. We're, we are going to lose approximately $2 million in the first quarter this year. Um, taking the information that was given to us by city staff or city manager, the discussions that we had, I think, was one of the most serious, as if we don't take it serious, one of the most serious, daunting discussions that our Audit and Finance Committee has had. I think we made the recommendation that um, is appropriate for this time to help us weather this storm, to help shore up our funds and make sure that we do pay back those funds that are expended uh, on anything that we use. It goes back into those funds that that are taken out of. It's highly important that we do this. I'm not really concerned how the other municipalities are handling it, this pandemic. This is what we're doing for the best for our citizens in Independence to, to keep things moving, to keep things going forward. And two, we have to keep in mind that at the end of all of this, we have got to keep business as usual. We've got to keep uh, the progress rolling. We were at such a great trajectory. We had projects slated up. We had um, uh, good motions, good movement. We had our fund balance to where we were on a good trajectory to get that fully funded at, at a reasonable time. Uh, this pandemic has slowed down just a lot of, of stuff. Just like life, things are thrown at us. We've got to shore it up and move forward. But at the end of it, our small businesses, which I've kept hearing uh, from Councilman Huff, that they are going to be needed uh, to strengthen our economy. We're going to have to help them out. Developing these areas where these small businesses are at need to be top priority. 
when we shore up our finances, see where we're at on the other side of the storm, we need to get right back to work, roll up our sleeves, and make independence the great city that it is, and keep moving forward with it. Madam Mayor. Madam Councilman Mayor. Robertson. Uh huh. Go ahead. So yeah, as as a the third member of the audit finance, I just wanted to to say a few things um, because of some of the questions that have been raised. So in our discussions at that committee, um, we did discuss the Bondurant decision and the fact that in Bondurant, there was no intention to pay it back. This is actually a form of loan that will be drawn up, that will be interest paid. And on the other side of the equation, the money borrowed from at least a couple of the enterprise funds will actually make them more money than they are getting on the open market and probably double what they're getting on the open market. Um, so as far as a business decision that's described in the charter for the enterprise funds to be run like a business, this is a great business decision on the part of those enterprise funds. Um, as far as paying the money back, it will be a struggle. And I think one of the concerns, at least for me, and I think the rest of the audit finance committee was that we don't know how long it will take the economy to come back. It's a huge discussion on the national and state level. Uh, nobody knows this is uncharted territory, but if it takes longer than usual for some of the economy to come back and some of the sales taxes that we depend on to start to come back, we needed a line of credit that we could call on if we continue to run close to being in the red in the general fund. We do, do, do not for sure want to run in the red or have to lay off or compromise essential services for the citizens of independence. It's my hope and expectation that down the road that the city will be able to obtain some federal funds like small businesses hopefully will be able to soon to offset some of the uh, costs of this pandemic. And it's expected, I think, by the end of the year or the first quarter of next year that possibly some of those federal funds may help to offset some of our deficits that we've had in, in the second and even third quarter of, of uh, 2020. At that point, when that happens, and I expect it to happen, then I think this loan can be paid back in full. And so I don't think the loan, even though it's an open-ended line of credit, will go on for many years. I think it will be probably paid back within a year or two to those enterprise funds. So I, I believe that things will work out for the best, but there's not time to go through the bond process. There's not time to go through a loan process and have an RFP. Uh, that would take probably at least a couple of months. Two months from now, we're going to be at zero, probably or close to it, in our general fund reserves. And then what? Are we going to have to lay off people? We don't want to do that. We don't want to have to risk the compromise that that would entail. So yes, I am in favor of, of doing this, um, this loan from the enterprise funds. And I think the city will be good for it. And I think the federal government will step in within the next year within a year, and we'll be able to pay this back within a year or two. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, Councilman Huff. Gosh, don't worry, he's getting his revenues, but um, you know, I don't really think that you guys did consider the Bonnerick case because it's very, very, very clear, number one, that you cannot do this. And it doesn't matter, a business-like uh, thing, and 317 is supposed to be given back to the ratepayers, not to the city, you know, why don't we change the name out there to Independence Power and Light Savings and Loan and, and Independence Water Savings and Loan. This is not a loaning institution. This is owned by our people. I, I just cannot believe this, but that's all I have to say. Is there any further discussion? Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the emergency ordinance 20504. Council Members Huff. Absolutely not. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dean Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes.
This takes us to council member comments. I'm going to start this evening with Councilman Huff. Oh, lucky day. Well, so I can say I'm appalled at this council that they didn't, they're not even concerned about the charter, which they all had an oath. And I know I did that. Maybe we ought to reread this thing one of these days. The bomber case, you totally ignored. Only when it, it works for you and the municipal rate did this thing ever come about. And we still have not even considered the financial welfare of our citizens, nor our small business owners. We're gonna go just well, and we're just gonna roll on down. We're gonna continue to operate while other people are suffering out there. I just, uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I just cannot believe this council, especially down at the other end, the people that always are throwing the charter in people's face. There's a, two, a couple of them down there that continue to do that. And all of a sudden it's good because it serves what they wanna do. So that's it for me this evening. Thank you. Councilman Perkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's uh, been a little bit since we met. Um, I hope everybody's doing well, doing good, stay safe, follow the CDC recommendations. I must say in response to uh, Councilman Huff, I think this city council, your leadership mayor, uh, your leadership, Mr. City Manager has helped us stabilize, move forward. This is unprecedented times. Um, been on this council before, I've never had to deal with a situation like this. I think our staff has been most professional. I appreciate your updates. I appreciate the hard work you've been putting in, Mr. City Manager. Madam Mayor, thank you very much. I do not appreciate the grandstanding that has taken place here tonight. I think this council has looked at all measures that we can possibly do to shore up our finances, to make sure that our city is running at 100% or damn near 100%. We're not laying off our personnel, but we're keeping things moving forward because we're gonna be on the other side of this. And when we do, we need to be stronger and ready to hit the ground running and move and get our small businesses moving and grooving. And I do take offense that we have not done that. I've met with our square uh, subcommittee. I've worked with them and have talked with them. We are looking at this as best as we can. I think we just need to keep cool heads and make the right decisions that we've been doing. Thank you. Councilman Doherty. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thanks to all of our good city employees for keeping the doors open as best we can and, and providing service to the citizens. Councilmember DeLucy. I agree 100% with Mr. Doherty, as well as with Mr. Perkins. I know that each one of us is very concerned about maintaining essential city services, we may disagree on how we're gonna get there, but that's the goal every one of us wants to make. And I know that's the goal of the city staff, the city manager, everybody who works for this town. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership. <laughs> Councilman Robertson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want also to thank you and, and uh, our and Zach Walker, our city manager, for your outstanding leadership. I know both of you have put in an uh, extreme amount of hours over the past two weeks. And sometimes that takes its toll psychologically as well as physically. So um, may God bless both of you in the days and weeks ahead. I want to thank our first responders, Point, all the folks that uh, are trying to to treat patients and to diagnose patients here in the Independence area. Um, I think we've been very fortunate and I encourage everyone to follow the stay at home orders. I'm, I'm very thankful that Governor Parsons has issued that. I had sent him a note a week ago myself uh, asking for him to consider that again. I think it's extremely important that we continue that for the next few weeks. Uh, it's gonna make all the difference in the world uh, remember to wash your hands, stay safe, and uh, may God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Van Camp. Nothing tonight, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, I just want to also echo my deep, deep appreciation to all of those who are fighting this on the front lines for us, all the healthcare workers in our community, 
Independence, Jackson County, our greater regional area who are dealing with an incredible amount of pressure and, and risk every single day that they go to work. Certainly our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers who are continuing to go out and serve our community. Um, I have to especially recognize um, our inspectors who are working so closely with us to enforce these stay at home orders and enforce these essential business orders. And they're just going, you know, night and day responding to calls and explaining this to businesses and citizens. And the, the goal of this is to get us back on our feet as soon as we can. Um, the incident command team that I'm working with um, the city manager, the fire chief, Christina Heinen, our acting health director, Meg Lewis, our PIO, um, Dante Klinicki, uh, Janelle. It, it's just um, incredible the things that we that come up every single day that need decisions and then working so closely with all of our directors in the city and many outside agencies as well, our school district partners, our social service agencies, our EFS 16 that's been um, assembled. Um, it's just an incredibly fast changing um, situation. And every single day we're out there making decisions um, for the betterment of our community with the consultation of an incredibly talented and dedicated staff in our city and in our um, wonderful partnerships that we have been able to develop around the region and around the country. Um, so I think that what we have done as a council is making a positive impact in supporting a very early um, declaration of emergency and we are seeing the benefits of that now, but we need to stay diligent. Absolutely, these next couple of weeks are going to be critical. So we'll you know, continue to be there for our community, for our businesses, to support them, our Chamber of Commerce and our Economic Development Council and Tom Lesnick and his groups are become just an incredibly valuable resource in helping our small businesses and our industry partners understand um, how you know we're going to get through this and the resources that are available to them. Um, so I could go on and on, at, but um, my it's just been an amazing show of community pulling together and making these decisions. So thank you to all of the council. Um, if we aren't sharing enough information in this fast moving environment, please let us know. Um, as I say, I'm on calls as we all are um, from morning till night with lots of different people all over the country, um, getting ideas, sharing best practices, getting information. And so I'm happy to have a discussion with any of you at any time about that. Um, we will meet on, we will plan to meet on April 20th. I will talk with the city clerk to see if there's a need for us to have our study session on next Monday as we're, you know, all in agreement. We're only dealing with things that are essential city business um, to make sure that we can uh, meet the charter requirement of approving the budget and respond to the needs that come up during this pandemic and state of emergency. So um, I'll talk with you about uh, the need for the study session next Monday, or if we uh, will cancel that, we'll make that decision in the next day or so. Mr. St. Manager, anything else this evening? I appreciate the, the kind words from uh, all the council members in recognition of our staff who certainly are all stepping up, but we would be remiss if we didn't thank the council for the efforts that you have done. We've, we've seen a lot of lessons from other parts of the world where people in positions of authority didn't communicate the severity of this soon enough. And you've all been very instrumental in helping our citizens understand the importance. We've seen great compliance from our business community and our citizens in obeying these 
restrictions and that's really I think going to make all the difference so I know when a council okay member um, run, we'll stop there okay very good I'm sorry I kind of lost you there for a second okay uh, thank you very much we are adjourned um, and we will be